Today is the fourth weekend of Easter, and both of the readings that you heard are about sheep and shepherds, exactly as they are every single year on this day. We will talk about both the sheep and the shepherds, but let's start with the sheep. Now, if you know anything at all about sheep, you're likely to know this. They are smelly. (laughs) Seriously, they are like dirt magnets. You know how the Swifter works on TV? All of the dirt is sort of sucked right toward that little cloth. It's sort of like that with sheep. Everywhere they go, dirt and grease and all kinds of other, well, let's just say undesirable things, are attracted to and eventually matted into their wool. And since sheep are unable to clean themselves, Over time, they end up, as you can well imagine, carrying a whole lot of extra stuff around with them. In fact, one study I found showed that clean wool weighed as much as 54% less than dirty wool. Gross, right? Imagine all of the sheep being weighed down by all of that dirt. Just imagine what they are carrying around needlessly. Several years ago, I read a book by Vietnam veteran Tim O'Brien. It's a collection of short stories, though I should say editors have a hard time identifying the exact genre of the book because It really is not just short stories, but it's not exactly a memoir either, nor is it a novel. Rather, as one reviewer said, it's a brilliant combination of all three. Anyway, the title of the book is The Things They Carried. Does anybody know the book? Read it? Just a couple? The Things They Carried is also the title of the first chapter, which is basically a lengthy, fascinating, and insightful list of all of the things soldiers carried. O'Brien writes, The things they carried were largely determined by necessity. Among the necessities, or near necessities, were can openers, pocket knives, heat tabs, wristwatches, dog tags, mosquito repellent, chewing gum, candy, cigarettes, salt tablets, packets of Kool-Aid, lighters, matches. Together, he writes, these items weighed between 12 and 18 pounds. O'Brien is careful throughout to provide a weight for each item. 12 to 18 pounds for the necessities, 5 pounds for the steel helmet, 2.1 pounds for the jungle boots. He even introduces the men in the platoon by what they carry, noting that what each soldier carried individually varied according to mission, personal history, stature, or rank. For example, Some carried things like photographs and love letters. Others carried extra rations or diaries or the New Testament. He says these items weighed anywhere from a few ounces to a few pounds. And the medic, he carried all of the things for wound care for a total of 25 pounds. By far, the most compelling part of the list of what these men carried were the things that could not be weighed. Now, mind you, just because something cannot be weighed doesn't make it any less heavy. Listen to what he writes. They carried all the emotional baggage of men who might die. Grief, terror, love, longing. These were intangibles, but the intangibles had their own mass 
and specific gravity. They had tangible weight. Let me ask you, what things do you carry? What does your list of necessities include? Car keys, cell phone, wallet, for sure. But what about all of the other things carried everywhere you go that are stuffed into your purse or your backpack, the diaper bag, or a briefcase? I could make a list, but perhaps these figures are more telling. The average woman's purse weighs 6.3 pounds. A student backpack can weigh as much as 30 pounds. A fully stocked diaper bag typically weighs significantly more than the baby. (laughs) Oh, and I tried to look up how much a typical briefcase weighs, but Google kept defaulting to how much does a briefcase filled with money weigh? (laughs) And now what about the intangibles, the intangible things you carry, the stuff that cannot be weighed but that nevertheless weighs you down? You know better than anyone the things on your list, though, Maybe you have carried some things for so long you have forgotten about them. Or maybe you're just in denial about others. In either case, there may be some wisdom in taking a personal inventory of the intangibles you carry with you. I'm thinking of things like resentments, jealousies, and doubts. Unresolved conflicts, worries, and anger, shame, heartache, loneliness, grief, to name a few. Isn't it interesting how we are unafraid for the necessities we carry to be seen by others? We're even occasionally proud to show them off, but not so with the intangibles they are rarely on display. In fact, we make pretend about them. We go to great lengths to keep them hidden, tucked away and out of sight. We don't want to appear less than for the things we carry. And yet, every one of us eventually bends or breaks beneath the burden of their weight. This was not lost on O'Brien as he continued his list. Besides the things the men carried in common, and besides the things specific to each one individually, there were also things whose weight was best managed by sharing the burden collectively. He writes, And they shared the weight of memory. They took up what others could no longer bear. Often, they carried each other, the wounded, the weak. That is what community, at its best, looks like. People bearing with and for one another. Because there are some things that are just too heavy for one person to bear. And because there are some times when laying down your burden is the only thing left to do. We wear the intangibles we carry like a sheep wears its wool matted down with grease and dirt. And like a sheep, we cannot clean ourselves. We are completely dependent upon the care of another. Today's readings declare that we, like a sheep, have a shepherd, and not just any shepherd, but a good shepherd, under whose care, protection, abiding presence, and love we live. King David, a shepherd himself, put it this way, The Lord 
is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And Jesus, the good shepherd, said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Do you see? Our good shepherd washes us clean in the waters of baptism, rinsing away our sin and all that weighs us down. Our good shepherd calls us to the table and feeds us from the bread of life in the cup of salvation. Our good shepherd bids us to let go of the things we carry needlessly and to lay down the things we can no longer bear because when he went to the cross, he willingly took all of the dirt and grease matted up in us and he bore the weight of it all in order to restore our souls. Our good shepherd does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. So in conclusion, please know these three things. One, there is no shame in speaking the truth about the things you carry. And two, there is profound privilege in sharing the burden of another. And finally, you have a good shepherd who has called you into a community of the faithful and who has gone himself to the cross bearing the weight of the unbearable. And he did this for you. Thanks be to God. Amen.